it's time for another species spotlight. It's been a while and we're gonna do one that's pretty famous. It is the archetype, the first one you think of when you think of arboreal snake, and that is the green python on a stick. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna talk about the green tree python today. So I make that joke because there's a little bit of truth to that and I'll get to it in a little bit down the road, but green tree pythons, Morelia viridis. So these guys are a really cool animal. Morelia being the genus, and then Viridis being the actual species. Viridis, the Latin name, means green, green tree python, right? Easy peasy, easy to remember why it gets its name. But with that being said, they don't always start green. These animals, while being very famous for being the, you know, really cool display arboreal animal, are also very famous for their autogenetic color change. So what that is, is that when babies are born, they don't look like the adults. A lot of different species of animals have it in varying degrees. These guys, and I apologize if you hear the puppy crying upstairs, she had surgery and she is crying, she's in the kennel. So I am sorry. So when they are born, they are born bright yellow or bright red. As they get older over you know, a period of two to three years, sometimes even more, they attain their actual adult coloration, which is that green color, hence their namesake. So they think that, scientists think that the reason why is that it has to do with their actual habitat. So these guys are truly arboreal. They only come down to the ground to lay their eggs and, you know, maybe sometimes to drink water or to find a new tree or shrub or something, right? They think that they're born smaller because they're further down, further out in their trees, close towards flowering plants, that they blend in more, that they look more like flowers to attract in birds and lizards to feed on the flowers of the nectar, and they snag those. As they get older, they get bigger, and they are deceptively large too, where they are green coloration, or sometimes not always green, where it blends in more with the larger branches and more foliage, where they blend in more, so that way they attack on that. So with that, when I said that they are deceptively large, they are frequently found to be between the lengths of four to six feet long, obviously with females being the very large ones. And again, those are mostly the Australian subspecies that are, or localities I should say, that are a little bit bigger because their prey is a little bigger. That's kind of happens with a lot of islands. Island localities end up usually being smaller because their prey is smaller and they don't have as much of it. Um, but this is where I say that they get that ball python and stick joke because you wouldn't know that a male green tree python can be five feet long because it's always sitting in that very iconic little loop-de-loop -loop little curl ball on that branch. So that's, a, that's why we make the joke that it just kind of sits there. And also, just like ball pythons, they don't sit there all of the time. These guys are nocturnal species like most species of snake, and at night they do cruise around their enclosure. Maybe not much as a ball python, but they do move around, which is really, really cool. And I'm going to talk more about them in a little bit down the road. So we've talked about what they look like, where they come from. Let's talk about how they hunt, which is really cool. So, you know, like most snakes and, most, and all pythons, really, they're ambush predators. And they rely on camouflage, hence their green coloration, to blend into things. And when food comes along, they bite it. They also do something which is really cool in adaptation that several species of snakes do that these guys are really good for and that is a term called caudal luring and what that means is that if you look at a green tree's tail it's very long very thin and a different color it's usually very dark almost black and they think they do that because it's supposed to look like a little grub or worm and i have seen some animals do this mine doesn't but they will sit there and wriggle their tail like this to make it look like a worm to bring in and attract a bird or a lizard or something else to come in and then it grabs that which is really cool it's a behavior that they don't really need in captivity but some do still hold on to and even some carpet pythons and carpondros the hybrid of the two do exhibit that behavior and it's a really really kind of interesting and cool behavior so with that in mind when i talked about you know when they grab that bird or whatever it is this is also, although the emerald tree boa is more famous for this, at least as of late, their teeth are massive. Arboreal snakes have some of the largest teeth, not fangs, they're not venomous, but some of the largest teeth in the snake world. And that is because they are fast and they are long, meant to hold on to fast moving prey, i.e. 
birds in flight are fast moving lizards and very quick bursts of speed. So that's why they're able to grab those and then hold on. All snakes have pretty long teeth in general, but arboreal snakes specifically have very long teeth to grab and hold on to those things. So with all of that in mind, when we keep them in captivity, that presents an animal that you really don't want to take a bite from, right? It's not going to kill you by any means, but there's still a lot of really long teeth that you don't want that bite. So that's why they're generally considered a much more advanced and much more display species. They don't like really being messed with. They're are always outliers and specifically with animals that are bred in captivity for multiple generations they're not nearly as reactive and defensive as a wild caught animal so in that mind in green tree pythons there is a very big difference in the way not the way but the different ones that are kept in captivity there are the locality people and then there are the designer people and I've talked about this in other videos, and I'm going to do a whole thing about this in another video after this. And that is basically when we think of green tree pythons, when we think about them, they're either wild caught or they're designer for the most part. And when I said before at the beginning of the episode that we're coming mostly from the Indonesian species, there's two localities that we mostly have, and that's the Biak or Biak, because I can never say that correctly for everyone, or the Arus. And then there's the domestic, you know, captive bred ones that we end up breeding that we get the crazy, not so green, green pythons like the sickness from Phoenix reptiles and all these other really cool ones. And there are some other localities out there that even are pure yellow. Um, so the wild cut animals like mine, the Biak or Biak, is much more defensive, more quick to bite, doesn't want to be messed with. But a captive bred one usually can be handled and moved around with. And again, there are even some other ones that either due to them having troubles feeding or just have been forcibly handled for so long, they're much more habituated to handling. But as a general rule, I will always say that a green tree is a display animal. There is also the idea that they are very hard to keep in captivity, which is true asterisk. So there is a learning curve when it comes to keeping all subtropical reptiles, specifically with like ball pythons, and that is how you can achieve the temperature and humidity regardless of where you are in Colorado, in Florida, in Minnesota, in Texas, in California, wherever. And that is figuring out how to get that. And that's why a lot of people keep theirs in PVC or plastic tubs where they can keep that humidity very well. But you don't have to do that, and there is a learning curve about a way to set that up so that way you can achieve those temps and humidity very well because it's even harder to do that in arboreal state. And once you learn that, then it's much easier to keep. And so that's why you'll hear a lot of Morelia people who have been keeping for a long time to say it's really not that hard. It's because they've gotten that knowledge of how to actually do that. And if any of you want a full video of me talking about that, let me know down in the comments or I can point you to somebody who's much better explaining it than I am, but I can't do it. But I wanna talk about just green tree pythons in this video. So once you know, you've decided to get that and you're keeping it however it is, there's this kind of myth that green tree pythons only drink off of their coils. So you have to keep spraying them down because they come from these very humid places, right? Well, that's not exactly true. They will absolutely drink out of water. So unlike a lot of arboreal lizards like chameleons and geckos, they don't really drink standing water. Green trees absolutely will. So please, please, please give them some fresh water. Sorry at the end I went on a little bit of a tangent there, but I just wanted to throw that quick little kind of little snippet in there that a lot of people think that that's true. It's not, it's a really cool thing to actually see like this long green vine come down and drink water. And it's really, really cool to watch. You don't always have to keep spraying them down because depending on your setup, spraying constantly can actually dehydrate the animal. I know it seems counterintuitive, but it's true. And again, if you, anybody wants to see me talk about that, let me know down in the comments. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I didn't go too, too crazy and rambly on this one. I'm getting better about it, everybody. I really am. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you want to see future things, anything I've forgotten about, hopefully I didn't step any two toes um, about Morelia snobs, um, let me know down in the comments. Email me at jzsreptiles at gmail.com, jzsreptiles. Um, 
Please like and subscribe if you can. There's a whole playlist about the species spotlights. If you want to check that out, it helps with my click-through rate, lets YouTube know that I actually exist. Hope you're having a great day, and we'll check you next time.